Human resources. What's the pettiest, what the hell, complaint that you've had to deal with? I was doing temp work at a heating, AC and plumbing company, answering the phones and stuff, but there was this one girl that just hated me. I guess I was too happy to be employed? Anyway, I go in one day and the owner pulls me into the office. I have to get a substance test done because I'm too energetic and I blow my nose frequently. I'm a morning person and I have allergies. The results come back negative, the owner apologizes, and I quit on the spot. That's right, Toby Flendersons of the world, we're reading your stories today. I for one cannot wait to see the depths of petty crappiness displayed by bored, unsatisfied office workers. He doesn't say good morning to me. My boyfriend's boss pulled that on him the other day. Why don't you say hello and ask me how I am? It was like, really? My gosh, I've got a similar complaint in the military once. I was in Iraq, stationed on a base where we, the army, worked with the marines. I was guarding one of our top secret facilities and had been on duty an hour or two. Suddenly this random marine came up to me, irate. You're so rude, he said to me. I've passed by you at least three times and you haven't said hello to me once. At the time, I was flabbergasted by this complete stranger being mad at me for not doing something I in no way considered part of my job. I didn't know how to respond. I wish I'd had the wits to point out that I was a soldier on guard duty, not a frickin' hostess at Applebee's. I don't know if it was a cultural thing, maybe he was from the South, or a gender thing because I'm a female and therefore expected to be sweet or something, but I just couldn't understand why a fellow service member would expect someone on duty to be issuing friendly greetings at passers-by. I mean, I've done the hostess thing and I'm pretty good at being friendly when it's appropriate, but when my orders are use deadly force if necessary to protect this room and to not make our customers feel at home, I just don't expect people to complain about me not saying hello every time they walk past me. This was 12 years ago. I'm still mad. Now, some of you have written to me to point out that in marine culture, the greeting of the day is actually a real thing. I honestly never realized that. I just told this story to my husband, who was also in the army and did two tours in Iraq. His first reaction to my story was, what the frick was that guy's problem? But after I mentioned the greeting of the day that y'all told me about, he said, oh, yeah, that makes sense. Like me, he never experienced that after basic training. He was in a very different kind of unit than I was too. So I think this was just an army or marines culture clash thing. I'm grateful to those who kindly informed me of this. Okay, this is weird, but I have to say that I did experience one manager who I legitimately made this complaint about. He would walk in every morning and go straight to the girls working in the handwork area and be super friendly, bring them coffee, lots of cheerful greetings, then walk to my station. I'd say good morning and he'd grunt and walk on by. Never a friendly word to me, but constant friendliness to the girls. I was fully competent in my job, by the way. Still am. After a few months of this, I was called into a meeting with his boss for a regular interview, and he asked me why I wasn't seeming happy with the manager. I told him. Next day, the manager comes to me and we had a long talk in his office, during which he told me he realized only after being asked about it by his boss that he was totally treating me like crap every morning. He apologized, stopped fraternizing with the girls, and has treated me fine ever since. So sometimes, rarely, this is a bit of a big deal. I'd say the issue you experienced wasn't just so-and-so doesn't say hello to me. It was so-and-so treats me notably different and worse than my colleagues performing an identical job function and the difference in treatment appears to be based on gender. The former is a BS complaint. The latter is quite significant. This was about 10 years ago. A guy in accounts pretended his wife had died. He faked her funeral, took compassionate leave, quite a lot of extra leave, as his wife was Indian and he claimed he had to go to India to sort out her estate. He was given £500 from an office collection. Unfortunately, he hadn't let his wife in on the scam, and she had phoned the office looking for him one afternoon. I believe the complaint that came in from his supervisor was, You know X's wife has died? Well, I just had a phone call from the afterlife. He was fired on the spot, sued for his extra leave, and is the reason we ask grieving workers for death certificates before we allow any extra paid time off. Oh no, sorry, I meant my other wife. I mean, saying your grandmother died is one thing, but what was his plan? You can only fake your wife's death for so long. Oh, we had a guy like that. Never could prove that this stuff didn't happen, but apparently his wife, girlfriend, it changed from day to day, his 18-year-old son and his dad all had a stroke in the same month. Then his mum died, then he leaves one morning saying his dad is back in hospital. He shows back to work around one saying, Yeah, I just had to pull the plug on my dad. Not an easy thing to do, but seemed totally unfazed otherwise. 
We were able to prove that he was going out to his car several times a day to drink, but I feel like having three family members all have strokes, and two of them not being of stroke having age, and then having both of your parents die all within two months is a little suspicious, especially when you can just casually pull the plug on your dad. Also, we weren't able to find any records of obituaries or death certificates anywhere, and the funeral home he said they were having the funerals at didn't list anyone that could be his parents as having funerals the two dates he took off work. So either he was a bald-faced liar, or he was the most unlucky man in the world for a short period. I'm as amazed by the gall of these particular people as I am disgusted by the behavior, to be honest. I used to help my HR team in organizing a summer event for families. Nothing special, just a grill party for employees with some extra events for children. This was a large company of around 300 employees. A week before the event, one guy raised ape crap hell because we chose a date when his daughter was on summer camp. You should have told him that was exactly why you chose the date. Summer camp sounds more fun anyways, honestly. Some people are so entitled. One woman in the US sued a school because her daughter had something else she wanted to do on prom night. So unbelievably, they sued the school to change the prom night. Because frick everyone else, the only thing that matters or has a life is me and my family. My company has had some serious what the frick moments take down the pictures of World War II airplanes because our German customers might take offense, had a phantom crapper who wrote F you on the wall in feces, and laid one in a newly installed toilet. It wasn't even plumbed in yet, they just crapped in a waterless toilet and left it for someone else to sort out. We had a guy who got caught sleeping at work for the third time. When the shift leader gave him a talking to, the guy complained to HR that he was being victimized. During the subsequent investigation, it was found via CCTV that the worker was going to his car and doing smack. This was confirmed in a positive substance test. These are just some of the ones that jump out at me. Not what you would expect in a multi-billion dollar aerospace engineering company. A letter of complaint. The doctor called me fat. I looked up the patient weight. Patient was unambiguously fat. BMI of 50 plus. The doctor was giving results of positive tests for non-alcohol-related fatty liver disease and corresponding dietary advice, wrote the patient a non-pology letter, gently hinting that choice of words was not ideal but perhaps some of the doctor's advice was good. Dear patient, the doctor misspoke. He meant to say morbidly obese. The doctor misspoke. He meant to say thar she blows, man the harpoons. I'm picturing Dr. House apologizing this way. My mum, who works for the state, had to deal with an employee who was catching pigeons at work property and then taking them home to barbecue them. I have a huge list. A manager who complained that a guy's accent was too thick. After speaking with the manager, who frequently uses politically incorrect slang, and the heavily accented gentleman, I can honestly say the manager was the issue and that guy didn't even have a very thick accent. A guy kissing his girlfriend hello after finishing work. This was reported as a homophobic act. A guy who kept asking people if they were on break at the same time as he likes to pray with them. Frequently. A woman calling herself the B-word and another employee reporting her for insulting an employee. Yes, the actual complaint stated that she called herself the B-word. A girl complaining that another guy was stalking her every night. She would ask a guy to escort her to her car. It was the same guy. That one was weird. She actually used his parking space at his house to save money since he lived close to work. She then later complained that he stopped letting her do this. I can only assume due to the stalking complaint. A manager reporting every single one of his employees in his branch for coming in late. Turned out he had told them to come to work an hour early, unpaid, but they came in 15 to 30 minutes early instead, unpaid, so he tried to write them all up. A male customer called his boyfriend so gay. When the employee told him not to be homophobic, he replied they're gay and lovers. She then asked for them to kiss to prove it. That one had a ton of people in stitches over how this woman literally lives a Futurama skit life. Might not be Futurama, but I swear I've seen a show where two people pretend to be gay and do a super awkward kiss. What size of company do you have to run for these things to happen with this frequency? Or is real life actually like The Office TV show? Also, I think the cartoon that last person was thinking of was Family Guy. One of my favorites from the other half who is in HR. So Mr. Blue and Miss Pink work together for some time. At some point, their inter-office flirting becomes too much for Miss Pink, and she goes to HR. 
Apparently, Mr. Blue has been sending her texts and making overtures that the married Miss Pink does not want and needs to stop. Mr. Blue is pulled into HR and they go over his behavior. He's going to be suspended while they determine if he'll be terminated. It's correctly pointed out that this is very inappropriate behavior. He seems to understand, but something is off with him. Then he asks, Is she saying she didn't want me to do this? Yes, comes the answer. This isn't something that co-workers do. You're single and don't understand the full scope of what's going on. Hold on a sec. Mr. Blue pulls out his phone and shows a text of Miss Pink with her undressed, spread eagle along with a steamy note. Then another and another. I'll send them to you for your research. HR regroups, ends the meeting, and does more investigation. Turns out they'd been doing the deed for months. The husband was getting suspicious and she needed an out. They both got disciplined by HR, though her marriage fell apart and she had to carry the knowledge with her that most of HR had seen her naughty bits. You can submit your own stories to be featured here on the channel. The story submission link is in the description below. And if you want to listen to some vibey music in the background, check out Easy Mode, also linked below, and subscribe. The most what-the-heck complaint I've seen is finger guns being banned in a workplace. Someone complained that they felt threatened by someone making finger guns in the air and filed a complaint. And I guess since that was creating a hostile work environment for that employee, they had to send a memo that it was unacceptable behavior. Eh, I mean, I guess it's all how you imagine it. Most people make them all friendly and nice, but maybe you're alone in the office and Mike, who's made it clear he really doesn't like you, walks in, stands in front of you, glowers and stares you in the eye, slowly raises his double-barreled finger gun, levels it at your face, pulls the imaginary trigger, turns away, and quietly goes about his business without ever saying a thing. Is that HR worthy? In my humble opinion, I think you need to wink if you do the finger guns, otherwise it is hostile. Not HR, but a friend who owned his own company told me about having to fire a guy for picking up a working girl in the marked company vehicle. It amazes me that people seem to forget they're representing the company when driving a company car. Whenever I drive one, I'm the most cautious, courteous driver on the road. Always following speed limits, letting people merge when they want, not cutting people off, no phone while driving, but I feel like I'm constantly seeing others in a company car that are some of the most aggressive and horrible drivers doing the exact opposite of me. It's just kind of like, why would I ever want to buy something from your company when you act like that? They don't work for Bang Bus, then. I know the people in HR pretty well. My work used to let people dress up for Halloween each year. Company is about 350 people in size. People used to have a blast. There would be parties and contests for costumes and pumpkin carving, etc. I would guess about 65-70% to of the building would get really into it every year. One lady complained to HR that some of the costumes were upsetting to her because they were satanic. We're talking vampires here, folks. Fricking Dracula. Like the classic teeth, black cape, white skin template vampire we all know. That was the end of Halloween for the entire building. I hate that B word. I would distribute pentagram necklaces and encourage people to join me in worshipping the Dark One, just to get her back for that nonsense. If someone can show me where vampires appear in the Bible and personally attack the various protagonists, maybe I'd say they have a fringe case, but even then, who cares? Silly, bored Bible Karens. The new recruitment manager was sending inappropriate and very explicit text messages to female job seekers. You know what? He didn't last very long. He didn't last long in what sense? In my office, there was a huge deal of who kept finishing the pot of coffee without starting a new one. Let me tell you, some office workers had to go four or five minutes without coffee, which caused chaos. I'm thinking it was you. I've done a lot of bad things in my life, but I would never leave a coffee pot empty. Did you do those bad things because some F-word left the coffee pot empty? Chewing too loud, typing too loud, had to go home because it's cold, hottest month on record and the AC in the server room next room over is dying, and they can hear him. Direct quote. Apparently, he was laughing from across the building, not loudly, and they were not okay with it. I once lightly tossed the keys to a fellow employee. It's something I often do, but this particular employee didn't like me. Later on, I was asked by my manager why I threw the keys at my coworker. Apparently, my coworker told them that I got angry and huffed and chucked the keys at his chest. I was utterly flabbergasted that I was considered to be the one in the wrong. When asked the standard, 
What should you do next time to make sure this didn't happen again? I didn't know what to answer. I considered answering that maybe my coworker shouldn't be such a wussy B-word. Luckily, my team leader stepped in and told me the right answer was not to toss the keys next time. After the meeting, I busted up laughing. It became something of a running joke with my other co-workers whenever we tossed the keys to each other. Next time, make a point by slowly placing the keys on the floor and backing away slowly. You might get another complaint, but that would be funny. We had an issue with scented things in our office. Some people had a sensitivity and there was little airflow, so if someone sprayed something, they had issues. But that's not the bad part. It ended up being a feud between two sections that had to be mediated by HR. On the sensitive side, there was a supervisor who looked for reasons to write up those who might be wearing something scented. She tried to write up someone for wearing a scented deodorant and someone else for carrying scented lotion in their purse. That person hadn't even opened it, by the way. It didn't help that the sensitive one liked to claim a migraine and go home if she even suspected someone was wearing a scent. They ended up stopping the whole issue by setting a trap and monitoring the scent of some new lotion. They all talked about how good it smelled. Strangely, the sensitive one got a migraine and the entire group was called into the office to be written up because even the supervisor could smell the non-existent lotion in her office. When called out on it, HR had to come in and put a stop to the whole issue. I understand that people have sensitivity to smells. I'm one of them. Old lady perfume makes me have an asthma attack. And the beginning of it was reasonable. People followed the rules. But this turned into a witch hunt on one side with someone taking advantage of it. At one point, the supervisor demanded to search people's purses and bags to make sure they weren't bringing in scented items. Didn't even have to be using them. HR did have to tell her that it was illegal, though. It's funny how tribal people can become in the workplace over a prolonged period of time. Boredom and perceived injustices can combine to mutate into some truly absurd fights. HR worker here. There's always the standard stuff. I got gypped on paid time off, overtime and hours. Some of my other things are an employee stealing a work truck and driving to a gambling town, pawning work tools in said truck, gambling all the money away, getting drunk, crashing said work truck, falling asleep at the wheel, and found by the cops in the morning. He then complained that none of it was specifically forbidden in the handbook. We offered him Cobra because it was cheaper than proving in a hearing that his actions fell under gross incompetence. One lady cashed her check twice by mobile deposit, then taking it to a check cashing place. Once the company asked if we could make the 401k waiting period 10 years. Another guy took a loan against his 401k for custom motorcycle parts. That's not a complaint, it's just wow. I had a guy complain that we took too much for child support. He had six orders, a different lady each. That mother fricker was fertile. A pregnant EE who sat right by the break room every day and complained about the lady microwaving salmon for lunch. Every fricking day. Spoiler, it was me who complained. Had a voicemail from a former employee complaining that he was fired for bullcrap reasons. I saved that voicemail for a long time. But the one that takes the cake... A flirty married jerk at work winking at ladies, but he's connected so he gets a small talking to. The behavior stops. That's good, right? The receptionist doesn't show up to work. Then we get a call from the receptionist's husband. Turns out she was sleeping with that flirty jerk and doing crystal at work. It shouldn't have caused such a huge ruckus, but the flirty jerk is married to the owner's sister, plus crystal. She's in rehab and the flirty jerk has to tell his wife that it happened in their own bed. That spongy mofo wouldn't even spring for a cheap motel. I'm in HR. I've had a few what-the-heck complaints. Employee complained about other people's perfume affecting her allergies but wore heavy perfume herself. She said everything outside her home gave her allergies. With a doctor's note, she was allowed to work from home, but was more than happy to come to company events and get wasted. Yeah, that makes total sense. We also had an employee who was abrasive, rude, arrogant, and actively tried to get people fired. And he was a little too flirtatious with women as well. There were several complaints about the guy. The what the heck part of it was no matter how much documentation we collected about him, the executives refused to discipline him because he'd been at the company for 20 or more years and had a unique wealth of knowledge that would be extremely hard to replace. We also had an executive who scared her department so much that people were afraid to use the bathroom. If some people took maybe a minute too long in the bathroom, the supervisors grilled the person about where they were and sometimes penalized them for that. 
The supervisors were under so much pressure from the exec, it took a long time because people were too afraid, but finally, some people came forward to us about the issue, and we put a stop to it immediately. HR is an interesting world, but it can be very stressful and at times lonely. Where I work, we have mandatory inappropriate behavior prevention training. The person who teaches it told us that they had, in the recent past, received some complaints about people holding the door open for them. The lady felt she was getting harassed because of it. They mentioned they didn't do anything about it except try to explain to the lady that the person was more than likely just being nice. I was threatened with a write-up for that once. The lady was walking down the hall with a container of documents in her arms. I was next to the door and held it. She even thanked me. A couple of days later, I was brought into the HR office with my manager and told my conduct was perceived as sexist. They had a write-up for me and I decided not to get pushed around. I told them I was being polite to someone with an armload of stuff. And unless the person who complained is going to do my job for them when I quit, they'd better tear that up. My manager and the HR rep had a talk, and the write-up was misplaced, never to be seen again. I don't know if that lady I held the door for was the one who complained. Probably someone else who wanted to stir the pot in the office. Talking to an employee about underperformance and she complains because I wasn't telling her how great she is after every text she sent. One of our biggest customers is a large electronics manufacturing company in France and the UK. We regularly get visits from them for meetings about something or other. At one such meeting, one of the visitors told us about Steve. Steve was always vanishing during lunch break and nobody knew where he went, until he was discovered in the toilets one day. Another toilet user noticed a foot twitching beneath the cubicle door and called out, receiving no answer, so they tried the door and obviously it was locked. Fearing the worst, he went for help. The first aider came back with him and called, no answer, so he entered the adjacent cubicle, stood on the bog, and looked over the partition wall. Steve was whacking away like his life depended on it. He received a warning for that. A few weeks later it happened again, only this time it was a female first aider who got a free show. A month later it happened a third time, only this time Steve didn't plug his earphones into his smartphone properly, and so was broadcasting the guttural sounds of a hardcore adult flick throughout the toilet. This was Steve's third and final warning, and he was fired. He claimed unfair dismissal on the grounds that nowhere in the employee handbook does it say that what he was doing was forbidden on company grounds, and it was during his own time and not during work time, and he ended up getting his job back. When you subscribe, make sure to hit the bell to turn on notifications. Put the playlist on in the background to finish listening to all the stories, or if you want some vibey music to put on in the background, check out Easy Mode. If you like Am I the Genius, give Am I the Jerk a shot. Everything linked in the description.